The BRSCC BMW Compact Cup is brought to you by Nankang Tires and Gas Shocks. The first race of the day, though, are the BMW Compact Cup, backed by Nankang Tyres. On pole position is Stephen Daly, who won yesterday, and alongside him is Mikey Doble. It's a massive grid of cars, and to talk you through it, in the commentary box, I'll hand it over to Scott Woodworth. Thank you very much, Josh. Uh, welcome along once again. Good morning, everybody, to day two of the BRSEC Summer Festival Race Weekend. We've had fantastic racing already on the Saturday. Uh, if you missed Saturday's action, first of all, where were you? And secondly, you missed an absolute belter of uh, racing throughout the day with uh, Fiestas, BMWs, three cracking races from the City Car Cup and also the ETSL STXR Challenge. And, of course, they'll be back. Apart from the City Cars, everyone else will be back out once again, of course. And as Josh alluded to, we're also going to have racing from the BRACC Club Sport Trophy at the end of the day and a 50-minute race for the Aston Martin Owners Club's GT Challenge, GT4 Challenge and Intermarks combined grid. Some very tasty machinery there, so be sure to stay tuned for that one as well. But we're about to get racing underway on the formation lap for our first race of today. It's the second of the weekend for the brilliant Nankang Tire BMW Compact Cup. One race yesterday, which was set by uh, yesterday with the grid fill. The second race being set by the uh, outcome of race number one is Ian Jones uh, with a rather uh, vigorous way of warming up the tyres off the line. So as the 31 strong field makes its way almost just about off the line altogether, let's see so we can run you through the grid then for our first race of the day and the second of the weekend for the Nankang Tire BMW Compact Cup. And it looks like this. Stephen Daly then, four-time defending champion and la championship leader for this year and race one winner yesterday. Starts on pole position by virtue of his win. It was a photo finish to the line between Mikey Doble and Ben Huntley for second place, but Doble just picked it up, so he starts on the front row of the grid. Row two is then Ben Huntley and Reese Clayton, one of his best performances of recent times with fourth on the grid. Then it's Ian Howes and Guy Davis on the third row, followed by Paul Maguire and Ian Jones on row four. Top 10 is then completed by Matt Flowers and Simon Welton from Jim Barrett and Mike Doble, as in Doble Senior on the 12th, sixth row of the grid in 12th. Then it's Lee Dendy Sadler and Ray McDowell, who's got some work to do in the Masters contest. He came into the weekend fourth, uh, fifth overall in points, uh, but second in the Masters contest. Lots of work to do in a weekend that's not really gone his way in 14th. Then Richard Sutherland and Russell Cage are come next on the eighth row of the grid in 15th and 16th positions. Row nine is Thomas Langford making his first appearance of the season this year. Alongside him is Ross Stoner. Then it's uh, Martin Gadsby and Thomas Middleton to round out the top 20, followed by Chris McGinley and Cliff Harper, then Pete Smith and Gregor Pryor to be sure that we have the top 24 made up in 23rd and 24th positions on row 12. Row 13, then to go towards the back of the grid with Stephen Somerville and Gareth Clayden, Matthew Adcock and Kevin Cook. And it's Tom Evans, Peter Parsons and Ian Shepherd who rounds out the 31-car entry for this weekend. And they're getting set for their second race of the weekend. But yesterday we had slightly brighter conditions and while we were anticipating possibly uh, some quite heavy showers throughout the day, at the moment it's stayed dry rather overcast and rather humid. Temperatures are still around about 18 degrees. It's quite hazy out there this morning, so I imagine that uh, if it is going to have a little bit of sunshine, it might start to burn that off. If not, we might prepare for some rather wet weather later on. So, but with these little rear-wheel drive 1.9 litre BMW E36 318 Ti compacts. They all run uh, a spec Nankang tyre. They run uh, a spec ECU from Hybrid Tune. They run gas shocks and a safety devices international uh, roll cage. You can pick one of these cars up as a donor car to build one yourself, around about roughly 500 pounds or less if you look in the right place, and then build one all together for around about four, five, six grand. You can pick a decent race car up for about six or seven grand itself that's turnkey and ready to go. And it's always an ever popular championship. There were regular grids of 30 plus, even 40 plus cars on the grids at some venues. And it's a wonderful saloon car championship that has breeded some fantastic drivers. Uh, one of the more notable drivers of recent has been a couple of drivers that have graduated onto the Toka package in recent years. One being uh, former British GT champion James Gorn, or Jiggy as he's known. Uh, he's moved on to the Mini Challenge and also did a season uh, last year in the British Touring Car Championship. Uh, likewise on the Toka package this, uh, this season is former uh, multiple time BMW Compact Cup champion uh, Steve Roberts, who's also done Formula 4, 
since he's done Master X5 Super Cup and this year's trying his hand at the Genesis GT4 Super Cup and performing quite well with some very strong top fives. But among that, there are other drivers that have also uh, done well and progressed. Uh, another one of note has been a former Comeback Cup racer is uh, last year's Master X5 champion, Joe Wiggin, who is now into Mini Challenge. But it does breed a nice, it prove a nice breeding ground for some really nicely talented drivers. And uh, as even a uh, father of an ex-British touring car driver on the grid, being Ray McDowell, he is the father of uh, a touring car racer turned GT racer, uh, Alex McDowell. So it's good to see that the McDowell name is still out there in club racing and competing hard. And there's always a handful of new drivers that come in throughout the year and cars that change hands throughout the seasons. And it's always nice to see new faces pop up to come up against the established challenges. So the cars then make their way up towards the grid. Uh, it's the second of three races this weekend. The third one is going to be double in length because we're going to have a, a, a double length 30 minute race, the first ever 30 minute encounter for the Compact Cup in its history. And they will be. Uh, very much up for that one. That will certainly be a test of both tyre life and uh, how much fuel the drivers will be able to put in and just the, the, the longevity because these races are usually 15 minutes in length, short, sharp sprint races. What that does bring usually with the short, sharp 15 minute format is it does bring very, very close racing. BMWs also usually race on a one day format with qualifying two races, but as it is our summer festival this weekend, we've managed to squeeze in three races. With that third one being that 30 minute, uh, 30 minute race, so be sure to watch out that for that later on. So, are we going to get the status quo as we had yesterday with Stephen Daly looking to make it two from two? That will be, if he manages it, his fifth win of the season because he picked one up at Croft. He even picked up two at his home race weekend at Scotland, in, in Norfolk in Scotland. He's already had one to his name here at Snetterton. If he can do so today, it will certainly be one that he'll be uh, quite pleased with to try and extend his lead in the championship. But uh, it's some of his pursuers who want to try and close him down. One driver we need to watch out for, who's a bit further back than he would like to be, is Ian Jones. He is back, just hiding behind the purple and yellow car of Guy Davis there, the black and pink machine car number 59. Watch for him from the fourth row of the grid. I can guarantee he will not stay there. He will be, be getting higher up the grid as quickly as possible. Race begin to rise and we're underway for the first race. Not a great start for a couple of the cars. They got very slow starts. So on the grass as they charge down towards Richie's corner. They're three and four abreast as they turn down towards the first turn for the first time. And in turn one they go, and it is going to be side by side between Stephen Daly and Mikey Dover. There was quite a few cars that either weren't concentrating or just looking the other way because they didn't anticipate the lights to come off that quickly. Either way, everyone appears to have got through safely despite that. And now they head down towards Wilson for the first time. And despite trying to get his nose in front, Mikey Dover hasn't got the lead from Stephen Daly. And now he's under threat from... Uh, ben Huntley now for second place, the man he fought so hard with over that uh, runner-up spot. And despite them going side by side in a photo finish at the flag, it was it was Mikey Doble who just managed to, managed to hold on. And he has still held on for second place here as they exit out of Palmer's for the first time. So Daly leads the way then. Second place for Mikey Doble, who's already challenging Daly down towards the Agostini hairpin. Rest of the field comes streaming through down towards the this uh, middle part of this 300 complex. I think as they came through the shot, it looks like Daly has held on to his lead as Ian Howe's going side by side with the 164 of Thomas Middleton. So now come up towards the left-hander at Hamilton, named after Sir Lewis Hamilton, and into the Oggies corner, which is always quite a tricky one. It's, it's an early apex, which you turn into, and then it opens all the way out on the exit towards the short straight, but towards Williams, and then a long drag down the Bentley straight, where we'll see the first little moments of slipstreaming. I think Ian Jones in the mix there has dropped a few spots. There is, that's possibly Jim Barrett, I think, going further back. Going up the inside of him is Ian Jones, so I told you to watch out for him. He will certainly be a driver to get his elbows out three abreast because it looks like it's either Matt Flowers or Ray McDowell are in there, Jim Barrett and I think Ian Jones is in there too. Leaders make their way into the complex and oh, they're going to have to try and sort themselves out here. It's Ian Howes battling away with Russell Cager and Ray McDowell. It looks as though Howes has stayed in front. Cager remains in front of Matt Flowers and Jim Barrett there in the ex Matty Parks machine which um, I saw something on Facebook earlier on where he'd driven that car from where he pull off I think it was 33rd at Carl Sakuma a couple of years ago in 2018 all the way up to second place and a brilliant weekend's driving so uh, that car now in the hands of Jim Barrett and certainly trying to do it justice as he makes his way in the mid-pack now ahead of uh, it's now Henry Cook because he's now lost a position to, uh, Amy, Ian Howes has lost a position to Henry so as they come out of the uh, sorry, Ross Stoner, uh, forgive me, Henry Cook's a bit further back, but across the line they're going to end the first lap of racing for today, and it is Stephen Daly who leads the way then from Mikey Doble in second place, Ben Huntley is third, it's Paul Maguire fourth, and it's Reese Clayton in fifth position. 
sixth for Guy Davis. The rest of the pack goes streaming through. There is uh, Thomas Middleton making his way into Richie's for the second time at high speed. So we'll get a first proper f uh, flying lap as a representative in terms of pace that we've got uh, so far in this uh, initial stages of the race. Everyone just starting to settle down now, going line astern as they head through. There's uh, Lee Dendy Sadler, former Fiesta Championship racer. So that moved from a front-wheel drive Ford Fiesta to a rear-wheel drive BMW Compact in the last couple of seasons and certainly been treating him well. He's had his ups and downs, but certainly enjoys life in the Compact Cup palette these days. And he's a bit mid-pack at the moment, so trying to make a bit more progress in the race car consultant's repair machine. Matt Flowers is diving up the inside, is diving up the inside of uh, um, in, that's, um, Richard Sutherland with Russell Cager. So Russell Cager trying to make moves here, trying to make a move on the Scotsman who comes into the weekend top 10 in points. As we now head down towards the uh, left-hander at Hamilton's. Make the way towards Oggies. Another big move up the inside is now Ian Howes tries to get back up past Russell Cager. So whilst um, Cager was trying to do the passing on Richard Summer, it didn't quite work out for him that way. Now it means he seems to be under threat from both Ian Howes and Jim Farris as they turn their way through. So that's up Matt Flowers to get through. So another attempt to try to make to get past it hasn't really worked for Russell. So now he's lost a place, but he's now in danger of losing more if he continues to uh, make mistakes like that throughout the course of the rest of this uh, 15 minute encounter. The rest of the pack makes its way through. Here are the leaders, still Stephen Daly, who's not being allowed to get away as quickly as he was in race one. He's being kept honest by um, Stephen Daly. Change on between. That is the car number six. I should know who that is, but uh, that's Nan Kang. That is one of my thick car six. That's Simon Welton getting his elbow stuck in. So he's now going toe to toe and side by side with Ian Howes. Uh, Ian Jones, also in there too, is Guy Davis. As the breakaway five lead away at the front of the field for sixth position. It's still side by side. Oh, they're bumping doors to come into the complex at Murray's. But Ian Jones holds firm on the outside line, says, Not on your life, sunshine, and holds on to the position. And now Guy Davis is going to get his, get his elbows out, and he's going to get stuck in to take another position too. So lots of action going on here as the leaders come across the line to end the second lap. So still that battle goes on. Looks like Ian, Ian Jones now he's been released from behind the battle with Simon Wilson. He's trying to pull away and close in on that uh, leading five. He's got enough time to do it. So he'll be pushing on now to try and close that gap. His last lap for record in terms of pace was a 224.927. Fastest first flying lap around off the grid is Mikey Doble, 223.142. As Simon Welton runs wide into the hairpin and loses the position to Guy Davis. That was probably one of the easiest passes that Guy will make all weekend, I think. So I'm making it a little bit too easy there as he just missed the breaking point a tad and ran a bit too deep into the Wilson hairpin. It's quite a wide corner, so you can take full advantage of that. Now, I think there's been an issue for Ben Huntley somewhere because he's now under threat from both Paul Maguire and Reese Claydon as they head down towards Agostini for the third time. But a head right flashing over the mid-pack. I think that was the Denny Sadler, I think, trying to distract Jim Barrett, who in turn is chasing Ian Howes, who in turn is chasing Russell Cager, who in turn is chasing the battle between Richard Sutherland and Matt Flowers. So lots of action in the mid-pack going on. Ross Stoner there in the bright orange car with the grey stripes. Which is the head of that's Jim Barrett's car, possibly. Out through Oggies once again, and Ian Jones, whilst his idea was to try and start closing in on the top five, he hasn't really been able to do it too much because Guy Davis is sort of going with him, really. He's striking cars on the grid, guys, machine. You can't really guess it. There it is. Crescent uh, yellow, purple, and pink. That's a, 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 a livery to stand out. To try and figure out something that's the one you go for. So, the problem is he heads down in seventh position. He has been up there um, making some good starts, particularly when it's wet and when it's in damp conditions. I remember back at Thruxton a couple of years ago, uh, it might have been as recent as last year, in fact, he was really up there getting, contending for a podium place. So right, when he's uh, on song and the car's on form, he can head it as quick as anyone else. Through the bomb hole for the third time. Mikey Doble starting to break away with Stephen Daly, and Daly is now starting to gap him by a car length or two as they head through the, the long right-hander at Corum. And Reese Clayton has managed to squeeze his way up to third place. Whilst we've been watching Ian Jones and Guy Davis, there has been a switch around for third to fifth. So Reese Clayton now, if he stays where he is, I think it'll be his second ever podium because his first one was at Silverstone a couple of years ago. That is 104 machine off the road. That is Tom Evans having a spin up at Brandon Nelson. But he gets going again with the car looking relatively unscathed. And now down into Richie's again for the fourth time. Daily leads, Doble second. It's on for third between. Reese Clayton and Ben Huntley with Paul Maguire holding on. Paul Maguire as well, still the top uh, 
Master's driver at the moment in fifth. He's the defending champion from 2020. There isn't a separate point structure for the Masters. It's simply whoever is the top Masters driver within the overall points becomes the Masters champion. So Paul Maguire certainly befitting his champion status in that one. Oops, off the road's gone Ross Stoner. Oh, another car's gone off as well. Now, that was a yellow uh, compact. And I want to say potentially it might have been Matthew Adcock, the 129. Let's see when he came across the line, the 22 car. Who was he near? He was near... I'm just trying to check some of the cars around him because there was Thomas Middleton's car who's orange. There was also there was Thomas Langford and Gareth you Clayton, know, Chris McGinney. So it's one of those cars that also went off. We'll be able to tell who it might have been when we see another car going down the timing screen because we went off in sympathy. He was involved in that issue. Uh, change on from between Richard Subble and Ian Howes. So there's that switch of position as Ian slots his way through. That will be him moving up into the top 10. Despite Richard's best efforts to try and get him back on the exit, it was uh, a good enough run off the corner for Ian that's allowed him to stay ahead of Richard as they head back towards Hamilton Loggies. Oops, oh, and that's Conta. That's um, that's Mikey Doble Senior. <laughs> They've both got identical looking cars, so I, I panicked for a second thinking it was Doble Junior. It's not. It's Doble Senior that's got involved. So uh, Mike Doble, uh, who is the, the father of Mikey, who got involved in that incident, and also looks like they're running wide with Richard Summerland. So there's all sorts going on. And he was involved there with the 17 of Pete Smith up at the Angostini Hairpin. So whatever really happened there, whether it transpired between both of them, I'll have to keep tabs, although looking where they were. I wonder if possibly Dover went off and then he was in a pack with a lot of other cars. When he came across the line, it was pretty close between Mike Dover in 22nd down to Pete Smith in 25th. It was about roughly six or seven, ten, about a second and a half covering those four cars. So I wonder if there's been a bit of a skirmish, which hasn't uh, worked out in Mike Doble Sr.'s favour, along with Pete Smith. Mikey Doble, his son, is still going, thankfully. He's still in second place. But he's been closed down a little bit now by one of Stephen Daddy's teammates because Reese Clayton there in third position is starting to kind of come back towards him a little bit, and he's bringing Ben Huntley with him down the pit straight. Paul McGuire still fifth as they complete lap four. And new fastest lap of the race has gone through for Stephen Daly. The gap has gone out by a further four tenths of a second between the leaders. It's up the inside, making him a dive for third. Goes Ben Huntley into Richie's corner. Nice clean pass from Ben, although if Rhys has got anything to say about it, he'll stick around the outside, which he does. There's enough grip on the outside line from the qualifying. The rubber thrown down by the qualifying session is going to help him out here. Paul McGuire thinks I fancy a bit of that too going around the outside, but he's not going to make it just yet. And so Rhys Clayton does hold on for the moment, but Ben Huntley's on, he's on the hunt, no pun intended, with Maguire in fifth position, in car number five. And I wonder, again, we saw this yesterday with plenty of battles in other championships. The more that these guys fight amongst each other, the easier it's going to be for the top two to continue to break away. So, really, these guys have to start working together a bit more and thinking, let's not fight and squabble amongst each other. Let's see if we can work as a trio and catch up to the two, top two in front. Because otherwise, Stephen and Mikey are just going to run away with this and hold on to the top two places. There's your top five in screen. Daly turns into Hamilton first uh, with... Mikey Doble following him, then it's Clayton, Huntley and Maguire. Still in sixth position is Ian Jones from Guy Davis. I've noticed I think Simon Welton has a time penalty by the looks of it. He's got an exclamation mark next to his name. And it is... It's either going to be five or ten seconds, I think. I didn't see on the race control messages that there was a, uh, a one of the track limits, but even though it could even be possibly a false start sometimes, because he's it straight away. Uh, I don't know how big the time penalty is, but he has got an exclamation mark next to his name on the TSL timing, live timing. So we'll see whatever penalty he gets towards the end and whatever penalty it is, what, res what the result is in terms of where it pushes him down. So leaders back into Brundle and Nelson for the fifth time. Still unchanged. Former Clark rocks over the curves. Really did thump the sausage curb there as he came through, uh, come through uh, Brundle and Nelson. That's a sign that he's absolutely giving everything he's got to keep up with these guys. And, oh, that a problem for Reese Clayton. Reese Clayton, that's either a missed gear or that's a problem for Reese. Oh, that's a shame. He was running as high as third place. And if that is an issue, I'm afraid that'll be him pulling to the side of the road. Through goes Ian Jones. Through goes Guy Davis. Oh, that's a shame. Reese Clayton finished fourth yesterday. He was one of the fastest guys out there. But looks like a mechanical gremlin has struck, which sadly is going to put an end to his second race. Hopefully he'll be able to get it fixed if it is an issue, which will get him out for race number three, which will be the longer 30-minute race later on this afternoon. So, oh, in fact, Reese Clayton has got front bumper damage. So... Has he possibly struck the curb? Because that's a bit unexplained. He, he wasn't near anyone, so I, I can only anticipate that he's gone through maybe the bomb hole and he's struck the curb quite hard, which in turn has actually damaged the front end. 
that's an odd one because I didn't see any contact. He wasn't. He, the next car in front of him was Mikey Doble, so and he was a couple of seconds in front of him. So I, that's a bit strange. That one. All I can presume is that he struck the curb a bit too hard going to the bomb bomb hole, and that's caused the issue that's now ripped his front bumper off. So that's a strange one. But unfortunately, the bottom line is it's him out of the race, and that's some work to do for race number three. Arts on a post car if you can solve that one. Meanwhile, the lead for Battle for now for third position is now just a one-on-one -on -one duel between Ben Huntley and Paul Maguire. It looks as though at the moment both Stephen Daly and Mikey Doble are pretty comfortable in first and second. There's also a, a, a duo going on between Ian Jones and Guy Davis. Further back in the top ten, we've got Ian Howes in seventh place. Paul Welton, who has that time penalty, how much we know not just yet, is back in eighth at the moment on track. Russell Cager is ninth, and Richard Sutherland is tenth from Matt Flowers' eleventh. And it's Jim Barrett, Lee Denny Sandler, Cliff Harper, and Thomas Middleton, actually top 15 in this second ranking tyre BMW Compact Cup race. And watching on the Guy Davis in car 28. Down the back straight they go for the sixth time. There's still one minute 22 to go, so next time they come past start and finish line, it will be the last lap of the race. And we now head down towards Brundle Nelson for that sixth time. As they turn in through the right-hander. Huntley now has pulled away a bit from Paul Maguire there, so in, that, in the infield section there, Paul Maguire's either made a mistake or just hasn't had the pace to try and match Ben. Where the conditions are still a bit hazy. Uh, right, there is, according to... Some reports I'm getting. There is some rain around in the area now this morning, but uh, it doesn't appear to be affecting anyone. If there was rain, you'd be seeing uh, wiper blades going 10 to a dozen on everyone's windscreens. But at the moment, it doesn't, that doesn't appear to be happening. So without 40 seconds to go, they're going to head on to what should be the last lap of the race. Uh, they're coming down the pit straight. Did they get the signal that it's last lap on the pit straight? Not for the marshal. I thought it was going to be a, a hold-up of an, an index finger to say one lap to go, but uh, not quite just yet. So this will be the last lap of this second race. There goes Ian Howes past the pits with Thomas Middleton, is that? No, um, no, Simon Welton chasing him down with that time penalty. But Stephen Daly then, after the initial challenge from Mikey Doble in the early stages, is now looking as though he's on course for that fifth win of the season. And it means he'll also keep up his record of winning at every single round that he's competed at so far, because he's had a, uh, a victory at Croft, two victories at his home circuit of Knock Hill in Scotland last time out, which was a fabulous meeting. If you get a chance to watch back the live stream races of that um, later on after today's action, do, do be sure to do so, because there were three brilliant races there, including that third reverse grid race where... Uh, despite finishing third, Stephen Daly put on quite a charge from ninth on the grid in that race. But, uh, he's in his most comfortable position, which is leading from the front. And keeps on making steps towards a potential fifth consecutive BMW Compact Cup title. It's rather unprecedented given the fact that we've seen drivers in the past be quite dominant. Of course, we've had the likes of, you know, James Gornall has been a front runner in terms of uh, the championship. We've also had Steve Roberts has been a multiple champion. Stephen Day he really is the, the class of the field in many cases. Many do challenge him, many do get close, and he, has, he is beatable. We have been able to put one over him and be able to pick up victories, but when it comes to the day, who is playing the strongest at the moment, the number nine, Stephen Daly, ultimately has just that little bit of an edge over everyone else. And he hits the brakes and turns in nice and gently into Brandon Nelson. Lovely smooth driving style. Despite he's being real wheel drive, little compact, he's not throwing the car around. He's keeping it nice and precise, nice and smooth. Just reeling off the corners before the checkered flag. Fast lap of the race, we should mention. At the moment, it's gone to Ian Howes with a 2 minutes 22.352. So he will steal the point away for fastest lap. So that's the case. It will be the big 50 points for Stephen Daly as he makes his way into Corum. Oh, little touch of the grass there as he turns his way out of quorum into Morris for the final time. He's waving to the spectators and to the crowd. He knows exactly that he's in. He's in relaxed mode at the moment. He's going to cruise up to the chequered flag. And despite Mikey Doble and co getting close, they still couldn't touch him. Up to the chequered flag. He's a second win of the weekend. Stephen Daly in the BMW. Mikey Doble second. And it's Ben Huntley third. The first of the race for the And it's Paul McGuire fourth. Ian Jones gets a top five fifth. Guy Davis is sixth. And Ian Howes is seventh. Simon Welton will come across the line in eighth on the road, but he will get a time penalty. The will be applied after the race. I imagine it'll either be five or ten seconds. The reason we don't know quite just yet. Ninth place for Matt Flowers and a sprint to a line for tenth. It was going to be the Dendy Sandler, but it's going to be Russell Cager who steals it on the line. 
then he's Sadler 11th, 12th place for Jim Barrett, 13th for Cliff Harper, 14th for Thomas Middleton, the 15th, 16th and 17th, she's Chris McGinley, ahead of Gareth Clayton and Martin Gadsby. And then we have... Uh, Sutherland's dropped down the order, in fact, has he even made the flag? You know, he stopped on circuit, so Murrow had a spin. There goes across the line goes... That was... Stephen Somerville's come across the line. Next one is Pete Smith, who had that spin earlier on after uh, getting involved in an incident which appeared to be in including Mike Doyle Sr. So Richard Sutherland, either he stopped somewhere on circuit, unfortunately, and not made the final lap, or he has come through, but he had a bit of a, an issue with his transponder. Which, either way, that's a shame if he's retired on the last lap. He was in and around the top ten, so everyone appears to have moved up a couple of spots. Across the line comes... 104, which is Tom Evans, and yeah, we haven't had um, no. Uh, Pete, we lost Pete Parsons at the stop at the start of the race as well, who's down at the bottom of the times, and no Richard Sutherland either, which is a shame. So looks as though either it's a timing issue or we've lost him. So that's a real shame, but unfortunately, that's the way it goes in motorsport sometimes. So quick confirmation of the results again. Then it is Stephen Daly with a second win of the weekend here at Snetterton. Mikey Doe will get second, and Ben Huntley is third. And then it's uh, fourth for Paul Maguire, fifth for Ian Jones, sixth for Guy Davis, seventh for Ian Howes, eighth for Simon Wellson, who hasn't, he has a penalty, he hasn't, either it has been applied and hasn't affected him too much, or uh, it uh, hasn't yet to be applied just yet, but he's still currently showing as eighth in the timing screen. Ninth is Matt Flowers, and tenth is Russell Cage, just round out the top ten. So we're going to head down to our first uh, part of our interviews of the day, so let's head down to Josh and have a chat to our top three, I'm sure. Enjoyed that second BMW Compact Cup race. Quite a lot. Josh, down to you. So we're down here in Park Firm after the first race today. Stephen Daly took the uh, the win. Steve, I can interrupt you. Well done. Another uh, win for you there. How was that? Uh, aye, very good. Um, first couple of laps were quite intense. Mikey had the tour. Ben was there. Reese was there. Everybody was there. So <laughs> um, went, into, went into the first corner on lap three and the gear stick actually broke. Right. Um, so I was having to use the lower part of the gear stick. So Did I mean, you get our camera in and yeah. I can show you that. Just um, if you look at the gear stick here, <laughs> the gear stick's flopping forward. So I mean, yeah, um, that was a challenge. So I had to <laughs> hold down in the gear stick. So that's why I'm so sweaty right now. Because that was a, that was a hard job there. And um, you, you've got a longer race later. So that's something that definitely needs to be fixed. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> something we need to look at for the next one. So yeah. Sorry, I've not many words, but <laughs> yeah, that was a hard one. So looking to the race later, it's first time a 30-minute race for Compact Cup. Yeah. Is there any new challenges that will possess? Uh, I mean, our, to be honest, our car seems to be getting better and better as the race progresses. So as long as the tyres can stay on, I think we'll be OK. But yeah. um, it's the starts we really need to work on. I think we need to pump our pressures up a bit to get the car off the line and do the first couple laps better um, to save the hassle. But we'll see. Thanks to the Casey Mossberg guys this weekend, the car's been absolutely fantastic and everybody watching at home. So. Thanks, guys. Well done. Cheers. So, well done, Stephen Daly. And a second place was Mikey Doble, who kept, uh, you kept Stephen pretty honest in those first part of the race. Yeah, I was uh, trying to make the most of getting the tyres up to good temperature. I seemed to have good pace at the beginning, um, right in his slipstream. So it was hard for him to get away. And then, obviously, when his gear stick broke into turn one, <laughs> it kind of bottled us all up and I at the back of him. And then he kind of managed to get a bit of a break after that. And then I struggled to keep up. But no, still another solid result. Pleased with that. I think you've been doing some Ginetta racing this year as well. How do the two cars compare? They're uh, nothing alike. <laughs> <laughs> They're so different. You just you, your brain doesn't even compute yeah. that it's the same thing when you get in the cars. I mean, left foot braking versus right foot braking, different gearboxes, everything. Just uh, definitely a challenge to get from one to the other. But I seem to have been all right so far. So hopefully it ca carries on that way. Again, I was saying to Steve, 30 minute race later. Anything you'll have to do different with the car going into that? More fuel. <laughs> more fuel and just drive it like another race. I'm sure we'll be a bit more sweaty than we are right now. Um, looking like it could be wet as well, so might have to put a wet set up on it if it rains. But other than that, just crack on. Well, well done on second place. And in third place was Ben Huntley. Ben, third place for you. You were involved in a right old battle. Yeah. Um, oh, through quite a lot of us, because the uh, start marshal put the start delayed board up. And, right. I think quite a lot of us took the cars out of gear and thought, OK, we'll wait. And then the lights came on and we all thought, oh, what's happening then? And the lights went out. So, um, yeah, a bit of chaos on the start. Um, but, yeah, I sort of hung on to the back of Mikey and Steve. Um, they sort of started to pull away a little bit when it became a little bit of a fight behind between myself, uh, Mr. McGuire and um, 
Rhys Claydon and it ended up Rhys going from I think what was it been fifth to third at one point and right. I thought oh that's <laughs> frustrating and um, I managed to get past Paul and started piling the pressure on to Rhys and um, I don't know what happened to his car I assume assume it was a gearbox or a uh, well, we saw that Rhys Claydon's car had a damaged front bumper so we didn't know if he had an offer anywhere but not something you saw no, he came out of um, out from under the bridge and out into the bomb hole. And as he came through the bomb hole, it was making all sorts of wonderful noises. So um, I assumed he'd gone for a gear and missed it. And then I saw him drop further back in the mirror, and I thought, well, maybe he's popped an engine or popped the gearbox or something. So, um, but no, I know it's not how you want to inherit third place, but podium's a podium at the end of the day. It's more championship points. Um, reverse grid race later on today. I'm a bit unsure of the weather. I think we all are um, hoping for a wet 30 minute. Yeah. I think that'll suit suit me quite nicely. Um, I know it'll suit Steve very nicely. Um, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, we, everyone's been talking about rain all weekend. It's just not turning up at the moment. I oh, know, I can't believe it. Everybody said, you know, heavy thunderstorms from Friday night onwards. And here we are on Sunday morning and we've had a little drizzle overnight. And it's, you know, for a wet weather driver like myself, I'm sort of hoping it's going to open up. So no, my luck, it'll rain just as we come into after the race three. So. <laughs> well, well done on another podium place. Thank you very much.